They say that for everything there is a season, but tried telling that to a farmer in Niger this year. Normally, Hassam's millet harvest will yield enough to feed his family for a year, but this time it will only last three months. You say, if the rainy season is good, the grass is good like this, but now it's more like this. Drought has caused crop failure throughout the Sahel, and the effects are already being felt at the market nearby. Millet prices have risen by 30 percent since the same time last year. Even in the best of times, poor education and bad diet keep the beds full of severely malnourished children at this hospital in nearby Doso. The red means they may never reach their full potential. Another generation blighted by hunger. The devastated harvest has authorities watching out for an increase in admissions. Niger struggles with some of the highest rates in population growth and poverty. A drought like this year can set many people over the edge from hunger into starvation. The last thing they need is another hungry mouth to feed. No food. No food. No eat. But that's exactly what is happening. I go to one end easy young Tiva. Abdul was working as a garbage collector in Libya. During the uprising, he barely escaped a lynch mob. He was evacuated by ship and then airlifted back to Niger. He has five children and his wife is in the hospital. Now back home with no job, he can't pay her hospital bill, much less finish the house he was building with the remittances he was sending from Libya. Hunger is forcing people to leave their homes, looking for work in Nigeria, Benin, and the Ivory Coast. In this town, only women, children, and the elderly remain. Now even they have had enough. This woman says she has decided to go to the capital, Miami, to sell sand. It doesn't have to be this way. Just a few kilometers away, in Garbi Malau Koya, tomatoes are growing in the desert. The World Food Program paid these women with food to reclaim a silted lake. Now it provides water, life, and hope. But humanitarian organizations are fighting the perception that places like Niger are basket cases, that there's no point in trying to help. Nobody's asking the World Food Program for a free handout in Niger. Nobody. Not the government, not the local authorities, and certainly not the women in the community. They're not asking us for a free handout. They're asking us for some assistance so that they can stay in their homes, in their villages, work in their fields, maintain their families, and keep their life going. Niger's future begins and ends here. Meals given to these children at school ensures that they can concentrate on learning instead of their hungry stomachs. If tomatoes can flourish in the desert, then so can they. For the World Food Program, I'm Jonathan Dumont.